So we need to take a step back for a moment and consider how are the access points actually going to get their IP address. In this section, I'm going to talk about the use of DHCP and DNS. If you're already comfortable with these concepts, then you can safely skip this module. Well, we know that the first option available to us is to use the internal DHCP server on the zone director. However, that's not necessarily a good idea. DHCP on the zone director is found under system and scrolling down, we'll see the DHCP server options here. Well, we mentioned that this is really only for testing. It's not really appropriate to use this in a production network. And one of the reasons is that we don't have the advanced options. You can only issue IP addresses on one subnet. So clearly not appropriate for production environments. So let's look at what we should use. A much better option is to use a dedicated external DHCP server. Dedicated DHCP servers have multiple options that we're going to find useful. The common scope options include the IP address and the subnet mask. This is used not only by the access points, but also for the clients that will be joining your WLANs. And as you'll be running multiple WLANs, you'll probably want to have a separate DHCP scope for each. The default gateway, again used by the clients and also for the access points to reach the outside world. The DNS server and DNS domain names are standard settings within a DHCP scope. And option 43, which isn't required, but is an extremely useful way to get the targeted information to the access points. And we look at that next. Option 43 provides you with the opportunity to add the zone director or zone directors addresses to the DHCP scope. Option 43 is information that's really only useful to specific clients. In this case, it's ruckus access points. They're the only clients that would need to know this. However, it is sent to all clients unless we use an additional vendor class, in which case it's only sent to ruckus access points. A ruckus access point powers on and sends out a DHCP discover. The DHCP server will respond with the IP details for the access point, including the additional option 43 information. The access point now has the primary and secondary zone director addresses and will send discovery out to those specific zone directors. Well, of course, there are many different DHCP server options available to you, so we can't go into detail here as to how you should set up your specific DHCP server. However, there are some knowledge base articles that can help you. So to find them, do a search on the Ruckus website under knowledge. The next thing to think about is DNS. If you do a packet capture on a live access point, you'll see one of the things that it's doing is it's sending out DNS queries for a Ruckus controller. So if it were to get that query resolved, it would have the IP address of a zone director. Let's look at how that works. The first step is to create the A records on the DNS server, one for every controller. When the access point powers up, it will receive its IP address and included with the IP address is the DNS server. The access point now can make a DNS query to the DNS server and the DNS server will respond with the controller IP addresses. Now that the access point knows the controller addresses, it can contact them directly.